the PlayStation 2 continues to receive substantial support from its community. Since my previous video on this subject last year, some advancements have taken place. Notably, there have been improvements to MX4 SIO and the launch of a new network protocol for game playback. I will take a look at 5 approaches to playing PlayStation 2 backups and I assess how each method performs on both PlayStation 2 FAT and the Slim model. Before taking a look at the results, let's delve into specifics of my test setup. I'm conducting my testing with both a PS2 FAT model SCPH-39003 and a PS2 Slim model SCPH-77000. The FAT console is from PAL region, however I'm utilizing it to run NTSC versions of games. The Slim console is from Japan and I'm applying the same rules by using identical game versions on this unit as well. For this setup I use PlayStation 2 FAT console with the Salt 5400 RPM hard drive. To connect the hard drive I use official Sony network adapter in combination with Bitfunk's SATA adapter upgrade board. For UDPBD setup, I'm using my Nokia router that's connected to both my PlayStation 2 and my Windows desktop. For running this server, I use UDPBD VexFAT 0.1.0 server developed by Awakening. To set up the classic SMB server, I'm using the GL iNet 300M mini smart router coupled with SD card adapter and a 256GB Samsung SD card. For this configuration, I'm using the MX4 SIO adapter from PCP Tech. For storage, I've opted for a Kingston 64GB SD card. When doing USB testing, I use the identical SD card from my MX4 SIO setup and the SD to USB adapter from my SMB configuration. Here are the various versions of OPL I have used in my testing. Let's begin with FMVs, starting with Gran Turismo 4. While FMVs aren't a major highlight of Gran Turismo games, this intro serves as a good testing ground. The expected duration of this FMV is 3 minutes and 15 seconds, but as you can see, not every of these methods has managed to keep up. It's evident that MX4 SIO on the Slim is encountering difficulties and falling behind compared to FAT model. And as is expected with the PlayStation 2 and using USB, it's the lowest performer. And notably, the PlayStation 2 FAT when using USB takes additional 41 seconds compared to the PlayStation 2 Slim. The thing to mention, not only the image is laggy, but also the audio, and it sounds like this. Not what I would call an optimal experience. While MX4 SIO on Slim falls short only 26 seconds, I wouldn't call it a great experience either. But compared to USB, it's somewhat close to being decent. Next, let's see how Final Fantasy X intro compares. The expected runtime for this cutscene is 2 minutes and 36 seconds, and only the HDD and Ethernet solutions have managed to do this perfectly. Even though MX4 SIO was looking great on a fat PlayStation 2, this time around there was a minor hiccup. I'd still call it a very good result and wouldn't be bothered by it. Sadly, the Slim shows similar result to the previous test and lags far more on the MX4 SIO setup compared to the fat. And as is expected, USB fails to deliver a good experience. Now let's see our final FMV test. This time we're taking a look at Kingdom Hearts intro cutscene. Expected playback time for this intro is 3 minutes and 11 seconds. We see a similar pattern to previous tests, but this time there's one huge difference. The PlayStation 2 FAT had a far greater struggle to play this FMV without lag on the MX4 SIO. In previous tests we had seen perfect playback or very minor lag, but this time we see it falls behind by 19 seconds. This is one of the most intense FMVs I have found while trying to find games for my tests, but I wouldn't assume this is the only edge case. 
and most likely more FMVs would struggle with the same setup. USB as always lags far more and the same pattern where slim is a bit faster applies here. Notably the cutscene on PlayStation 2 Fat played two times longer than expected. In this next portion of tests we take a look at load times, starting with Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. An interesting observation is that loading screens are fixed in length and run only for 30 seconds in this title. As we reach 30 seconds, screen starts to fade to black, but the game is not finished loading. For this test I have measured time from loading screen appearing for the first time till I can faintly see in-game HUD. Interestingly enough, UDPBD has managed to beat HDD setup by one second. But as we will see in further tests, this won't be a pattern that repeats. That being said, it's fairly obvious that UDPBD is something worth looking into if you are using a slim console, as it's very comparable to the HDD on the FAT. This time around chart is a lot more interesting, as with loading times we can see much fuller picture of how each solution performs. While loading time differences don't seem that dissimilar to each other, we can see the best performers on top. This game seems somewhat limited in loading speed and with our final test we will see much more of a spread. But before we take a look at that, here's Splinter Cell Double Agent. Much less interesting results as it seems the game is limited at what speed it can load data. Still, a similar pattern to the previous test is evident, but much less pronounced. If this was the only test done, differences between all solutions might seem insignificant. The last loading test I've made is for Tony Hawk's Underground 2, and it seems the game does utilize the full speed of the medium we are playing it from. It's amazing how UDPBD compares to a hard drive setup. It's so close speed-wise and it's two times faster than using a regular SMB setup. With all these tests out of the way, I think we have a pretty good look on how each solution performs. On a side note, I've also tried to assess potential disparities in data streaming performance while in-game. However, the outcomes have been inconclusive regarding to any noticeable distinctions. I have a video clip of a GTA San Andreas being played using both the MX4 SIO and USB setups and I haven't observed any substantial differences. Most likely more testing in this regard is necessary. Let's take a look at the combined results, where 100% represents the best possible outcome. Please take these graphs with a grain of salt since it's not the largest sample size, but I thought it would be interesting to see nevertheless. Starting with FMV playback, we can see that HDD, UDPBD and SMB manage to playback FMVs without any issues. While MX4 SIO is almost there with the FAT console and slim falling behind quite a bit. USB results as expected are fairly terrible. Moving on to the combined results for load times, we can see that HDD didn't manage to reach 100% due to the GTA San Andreas test. UDPBD takes second place and interestingly shows no difference between running it on either the FAT or the SLIM console. SMB takes a not so close third place and the gap between it and MX4 SIO seems very narrow. I guess that's how much of a difference in transfer speed it takes for FMVs to start become laggy. To conclude this video, my recommendation is to use a hard drive whenever possible. This will provide the easiest and fastest solution for playing your PS2 games. For the slim console I currently personally use SMB, but UDPBD seems to have a promising future in replacing SMB altogether. Either way, both options are excellent. Regarding the MX4 SIO, I think it's a great solution where FMVs are not a concern. It just needs a little more development to hopefully reach the necessary transfer speeds for playing FMVs. And for USB, my only recommendation is it to use as a last resort. Thank you for watching this entire video. 
I hope you found it helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.